Want to know where we are? We are at the West Los Angeles Courthouse, going through a little bit of history. Actually, a lot of history, a lot of skate history happened here. As we walk in, we have the outlet. And early on, it was only skated as this forced air outlet. Only a few things too, because of the fact that it was uh, so tall. And then eventually, Chris Roberts, I feel like, is the guy who really sort of set this thing off. The most perfect 5.0 grind ever. Balance beam on the truck. Now you got Tiago Nolly crooking thing. Deshaun Jordan, front nose, switch heel out 10 feet past the ledge. It's funny what happens when one person breaks the ice and where it goes from there. first guy's going up the stairs. Yeah, because he had the pop and he'd go fast and like at the time you're like, dude, no one's doing that. It's pretty crazy. And they're a pretty low set of stairs, so a lot of lines. One, easy to do tricks down, but another started to find out that you could actually flip your board up things. And I feel like here was definitely one of the places where that all started, where, you, where flipping your board upstairs really kind of became a reality because you spent enough time here and you realize you have more pop than you think, you would use this as a test to see if you could. And then we have the fountain. This used to be a fountain, a water feature up there and it would spill down into this lower area. Popping flat ground tricks higher and catching them a lot of that kind of started here because flat ground tricks, even less than a year before that, were not popped very high. They were just ground balls landing half primo but still rolling away. It was sloppy. And this wall, it gave you a target to really flip your board, catch it good, and do it proper. A lot happened here that kind of pushed the limits of skateboarding, especially back in like 1993. You were just, you were just hanging out and you didn't realize what, what kind of progression was actually happening while it was actually happening because you were just too busy in the moment having fun. I skate here a lot with Chico, Renes, Daniel Castillo, Guy Mariano, Jerron Wilson, Rudy Johnson, Tim Gavin, Gabriel Rodriguez too. It would just be like coming to a skate spot and hanging out. It's a lot of dudes that were really, really talented and really pushed the progression of skateboarding. Probably in 91, 92, this place was being skated, but by people that lived nearby, really. It wasn't a destination yet. We would come skate a lot on the west side. Even though we lived in Hollywood, we would spend a lot of time skating at the beach at Santa Monica, the pond down there on Wilshire, which is not too far from here, and then, then we would come here. This would be like a place we would come to later in the day because you could skate here after work hours. And the reason we normally didn't skate here on the weekends is because we'd probably spend a lot of time in schoolyards skating those. So here is usually 
late in the day, middle of the week. And then it just became part of the, the routine of skate spots where we'd, we would skate at a lot here. And I feel like that's when things started. Like there was videos that started to happen and then it's like, oh, let's film here. You're not even realizing that you're just fucking around with friends and skating. Do this, or you tried that, or you, could you, you ever tried this, or you know, it was kind of one of those things. And a lot of times it's like, oh, I've never tried that, I should try and learn that. And you just learn it, and that sparks another idea for somebody else, and they learn something, and so on and so on. And the group just kind of pushes each other by just doing new things in front of each other and probably realizing that, oh, there's more things possible. The flow of everything would start with the ledge maybe, and then you would end up in the fountain. You can just start down the stairs, hit a ledge, start down the stairs, go into the fountain. Or you just circle the place and you could do laps of ledge lines. Wait, I have a line where I skate over one, one of these light posts and been knocked over. And we turn that into a spot. We're doing tricks over a light post that had just been knocked over. We go in like kind of the earlier 90s. Yeah, Ronnie Krieger's lines are pretty gnarly. You know? Going up and down the stairs into the, like, it's just the level of flip tricks in one line that were pretty insane. These ones always were super low, these two. These were the fun ones, the low ones. Out there I used to get, that got skated so much that they were just, they were all worn out on that side, right? And so then this side, they were all still kind of fresh. That was another reason why maybe people start with this way because it grinded better on this side. And that side grinded terribly because it was all worn down. We were skating the ledges a lot, but I feel like we're using the ledges more as part of a line. And the ledges weren't that great. And so, you know, it'd be some fundamental ledge tricks were happening, but the highlights of those lines were flipping your board up the stairs and down the stairs and over the wall in the fountain. It was a little while before they started to get really broken in and there was just paint on them and we weren't even really waxing stuff. We just would skate it to break it in. So maybe that's a lot of why, if you look through the history of the footage, ledge tricks were like, cool ledge tricks, but they weren't the most progressive. We're not out here wa like waxing, like let's break it in, let's keep just, just grind it over and over. You know, we just like dealt with what was there until we skated enough that it got better. Or hopefully some rollerbladers showed up and really like broke it in for us. <laughs> and then the stage. The stage. There was like so many levels to this place of how like that was the low ledge. And then this, these ledges were a little taller. Then you were popping over the wall in the fountain. Then you start popping stuff up the stairs and then, okay, I do that. And then you start to get up on this stage. There was a gradient to everything here because as things got more comfortable on this side, you're like, well, maybe I can do it here. I remember Gabriel Rodriguez, I feel like was the one who really utilized all sides of the stage. Like this side was a little lower, that side was a little bit higher and then so on and so on. But he had fake you all, he switched front crook this thing back in like 95 and it was, unreal. It was unheard of to see the types of ledge tricks on something so high. He was a pioneer of doing ledge tricks on high ledges. Like when you watch Tiago now, that's what it was like watching Gabriel back then. This became um, a proving ground. If you can do tricks on the side of it, you can use this as a manual pad. And it became some of the more basic tricks. So like, okay, well, that's possible. Maybe you can flip up this thing. Wait, everyone, you can flip up this thing. Next thing you know, everyone's flipping up this thing and you're like, we're a decade before, it was like, no, there's no way. And next thing you know, it's an onslaught of decades of the wildest tricks that have gone down. You did a manual trick here, it's like, whoa, oh, he did it up on the stage at the courthouse. That, that was like a big deal. Yeah, watching all that Nick Tucker stuff. I'm like, dude, how?
once someone else sees something that's possible and figures out a way to push themselves further than what they saw was possible, it shows that there is more out there than what has been done. That was all possible because you could just, you could skate here. You didn't get kicked out. There were times, it's funny, this place went through different, all these different sort of waves from 93 into like 95. And then it kind of became a bust. They started kicking people out. Cops were showing up and like, hey, you gotta, gotta get out of here. And you're like, huh? I spent the last three years here, like unbothered. What, like, why now? Then it cooled down into the early 2000s, got hot again. Then the whole other, another generation comes and kind of brings it back to life and you start seeing more footage. And that's usually what brings it back to life is when the footage of people skating here, doing something gnarly, that inspires a whole other group of people going, I want to go there and try this. It was shut down completely. Then Nike coming in and putting the money into reviving this place, remodeling it, putting metal ledges and just basically making it a skate plaza that is like a skate park, but it was a street spot. The city of West LA being fine with it, then once again, it's just open for business and everybody could skate here as long as they want, as much as they want, as you can see what's happening right now. It's still happening as we speak.